So I've always really been interested in the Tudor period since, for as long as I can remember. Um, but I grew up in London and I did quite a lot of travelling growing up and I've also always been fascinated by cultural interactions by di between different cultures around the world and in cities. I came to this subject, I think I, I think my mind wandered in a lecture is probably the answer, but I, um, I, I was just uh, interested when I realised that the Tudors had started sailing around the world in the 16th century and I wanted to know, I read a bit about their encounters with Native Americans but there didn't seem to be much about their encounters with the Africans that they would have met when they started trading with Africa from the 1550s onwards. So I wanted to read about that but then when I started reading around that subject I found this Privy Council letter from Elizabeth I's reign which said that there were Africans in England in the, in that time and I was so surprised um, that I had to reframe my entire area of research and I just you know dedicated my, my doctorate to finding as many um, examples and evidences of Africans living in Britain in that period, um, the Tudor and early Stuart period from 1500 to 1640 as I possibly could and I found evidence of over 360 individuals living here at that time. When people think about black history, they tend to focus on the history of slavery because um, because slavery was such a big and awful and terrible um, tragedy and crime in our history that it's difficult to see past it sometimes. I think also that our narrative, the, the kind of development of black history as a subject has been dominated by an American narrative and in the history of America and of African Americans, slavery is obviously a really central part of the story. Um, but I, um, in, I think that there's a lot more to it, and that even even within the period of slavery, there are lots of really important stories to tell about uh, Africans taking agency in their own lives, and despite that context, you know, living their lives and fighting for freedom. But also, uh, in the period I'm looking at, in England, Africans were not in fact enslaved, so it's uh, a different a different story again. And of course, the his black history actually stretches back far, far back into African history before the Europeans even got there, when there were many you know, advanced civilizations and cultures that were far more advanced than Europe was at that time. In Black Tudors, I want to, uh, as I say, like tell some exciting stories about Africans in Renaissance England, um, and share you know the stories that I've found with 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 the general public. Um, I'm going to take uh, 12 individuals uh, and base a chapter around each of them and use their lives, tell the stories of their lives and use those to draw out wider themes uh, such as you know the legal status of why, explaining why Africans were not enslaved in England at this time, such as uh, how they got here, what what they were doing, who they ended up marrying or not marrying, uh, you know, what the children that they had, telling all those stories that I've uncovered in, in the archives. Um, and I, you know, I, I really want to to use the book to challenge people's preconceptions about the period. Um, you know, people people often I say I'm studying Africans in Tudor England, and they say, "Oh, you mean slaves?" And I didn't mean slaves, and I don't mean slaves. And I think I need, these stories need to be told fully and in an exciting and engaging way to to uh, to to convey you know the importance of this subject to people.